Hello, the configurable logic block or COB is the newest peripheral in our microcontroller portfolio. The COB enables hardware based digital logic to be baked directly into your microcontroller design. By the end of this video, you'll be able to recreate the seven segment display driver using the new COB tool. The CPU only gives a four bit BCD input to the COB module and then the COB's custom hardware logic automatically drives each IO line. For this project, we're using the PIC16F 13145 microcontroller. For the hardware, wire up the seven segment display driver like you see in the graphic on the screen. Then we can start configuring the software. Start by downloading MPLAB X version 6.15 or higher and the X8 compiler version 2.45 or higher. The links are in the description below. After opening MPLAB X, create a standalone project. For the device, select the PIC16F 13145, then select the latest X8 compiler and give your project a name. After your project is created, open MCC through the blue MCC icon, select MCC Melody, and then click Finish. Now that your project is open in MCC Melody, we can start configuring the COB. From Device Resources, add the COB module to your project. This will launch the COB configuration window, which will give you the option to select from pre-made common use cases or give you the option to create your own custom design. We'll start with a new blank design. We can start dragging and dropping components into our schematic. I'll start with an input that I can select as being an IO pin, uh, an oscillator input, uh, different peripheral inputs, or software register inputs. I'll select this as our software register input bit zero. Right, then I'm going to go ahead and add my output port. This can be configured as a peripheral pin select to go to an IO line. It can be an interrupt. It can be an output enable, as well as output to various different peripherals. I'm going to select it to go to one of our IO lines. From here, I'm going to configure the other three bits of our input and six more outputs. So we have our four bits of BCD in and then our seven IOs out to drive each of the seven segments. Now we can add in logic gates from the left and connect their inputs and outputs. We can choose from AND or and NAND gates, D and JK flip flops, MUXs and lookup tables to the project. Alternatively, instead of dragging and dropping components, you can also directly insert Verilog into the design. To do that, add a Verilog sheet. I'm naming mine BCD7SEG. Open the sheet and insert your Verilog. This Verilog can also be found in the project description. Once the Verilog sheet has been created, you will find it as a module in your project. Drag and drop it into your project and then just connect your inputs and outputs. Now that we have our inputs, our central logic, and our outputs, we are ready to generate our bitstream. Make sure your main sheet is selected as the main file, and then click Synthesize. If everything's correct, you should see a green check mark, and this bar indicates how much of your COB module is in use. Now that we've synthesized our design, it's included in our project. Let's configure the rest of our MCC settings so that we can generate our final application code. First, I'm going to verify that my COB module is enabled, and for my clock, I'm using the high frequency internal oscillator that's running at 1 megahertz currently. Everything else should be correct. The last thing we need to do is change our pin grid view to set up our IOs. If you connected your seven segment display like the schematic in the beginning, RC0 goes to segment A, RC1 goes to segment B, and so on and so forth. This grid maps the peripheral pin select options to a physical IO line. Now that our IOs are set up, we just need to click generate an MCC. Once you see generation complete, all of our MCC files are created and we just need to write our application code to interface with the MCC files. If we go back to our project files and look in our source files, we see our MCC generated files. In there is our COB source file and this is what MCC generated. It initializes the COB as well as gives us convenient functions to enable, disable, uh, configure it and write to our software registers that we're using as an input. If we go into our main file, we can write a loop to loop through 0 through 9 like we were doing in the beginning of the video. To do that, I'm just going to make a simple for loop. I know I'm going to be interfacing with the COB1. If I hit control and space, it will populate my possible functions, and I'm going to just write 8 bits out of the 32 possible ones. The decimal and BCD inputs are 1 to 1, so I can just write I to the software register, and then I'm going to delay a quarter of a second or 250 milliseconds. After writing that, I can just check that there are no errors in my project by building. If you see build successful, you've successfully completed your project. All that's left is to program your microcontroller. 
To do that, we offer a couple of easy options. The first is the Picket. It connects directly in circuit to program your microcontroller. The second is the Curiosity Low Pin Count Board. This board has a built-in programmer, so just move your dip onto this board. The last is the Curiosity Nano. This is our development platform that contains the microcontroller and a built-in debugger. I'm going to be using the Picket, so let me hook that up. The PIC kit is connected as shown in this on-screen schematic. Now, all that's left is to click Make and Program Device. There you go, your project is complete. To learn more about the CLB, the CLB tool, or other resources used in this project, check out the links in the description. Thanks for watching.